Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of my Let's Play series. You join me over here in the desert above our glow squid farm, which I have been AFKing at. We built that up in the last episode. There we go, we just saw one die down there. And uh, it has actually been quite a few days since I recorded my last episode. I had some family in town, so... Uh, there's been a lot of uh, AFKing and not being able to record anything that requires my voice, essentially, because uh, loud dogs and people. Um, so, uh, yeah, that is what has been going on, but I have been hard at work doing a couple of other things as well, which we'll talk about in a minute. But first, let's go down and grab some of the glow ink from this farm, and uh, I'll show you how it's been doing. So, I haven't done a ton of AFKing. But what we do have is lots in there. Now, this is something that uh, I've kind of been finding is uh, sometimes if I just pop in here and dispense with some of them, I get lots more ink sacks as well because of looting. So just come in here and take care of some of them. I still haven't name tagged any axolotls, um, just kind of letting them spawn and do their thing which has been working out nicely, and there's a bat in here as well, interesting. Uh, but yeah, there's, so our storage is over there, we can hop out this way, and let's just go and see how many we've got down here. So I've been killing some manually, and there's my sandstone. So we've got quite a few, you can see I've got some heads from killing manually. I've accidentally killed a couple axolotls, which isn't great. Uh, but we've got almost a full shulker box of this, and we haven't spent a ton of time AFKing here, so I am pretty happy with that. That is going to be more than enough for our signs and item frames that we want to be able to use. So we'll grab that, and then uh, we'll talk a little bit more about what my plans are for today as I sort of pack up here. So... Um, one of the other things that I have done in between episodes is I have been out to the 1.17 chunks and I've been doing a little bit of mining. I did a little bit of mining for dripstone because I want to make a proper dripstone farm and I needed more blocks and more pointed dripstone to be able to get the blocks and dripstone to be able to build the farm that I want to build. So there's a little bit of that. And right now I will show you a couple of clips. They'll pop up on the screen now of me farming dripstone. And this is just me leaving the computer for a long time, coming back, farming the dripstone. And then I changed the setup so it was higher in the world so that I could leave for longer. But I think it was actually worse because then I couldn't collect stuff that was on the ground. But anyway, I did manage to collect enough uh, pointed dripstone and dripstone to start building up my farm, at least uh, putting the dripstone. I'm going to have to get a little bit more pointed dripstone from the farm itself to be able to finish it off. But that is where we are at now. And the very first thing that I'm going to do today after just a little bit of time over here at the Glow Squid Farm is we are going to build up that dripstone farm. And I have built up the redstone for it already. Uh, there's no design on the building yet. I'll explain why in a second. But I'm going to show you that now in the form of a third person time lapse. So let's get it going.
and there we go so here is the farm itself built up and as you can see uh, we didn't quite have the pointed dripstone to be able to sort of finish off what is going on over here with actually placing it in i've gotten a couple more since oh and i can't reach of course um so yeah we're just slowly going to be uh filling this up with the pointed dripstone and actually i'm going to knock down uh my uh little makeshift farm as well so we'll get some dripstone from this as well as we knock that down in a minute but um yeah, so the redstone here basically works. It's a flying machine and two flying machines, actually. Oh, I hate honey. Uh, two flying machines, so one up top and one down below, and that is because dripstone also... There you go. We just saw one happen. We have a dripstone on this block down here. So this is actually going to knock out all of my scaffolding. I didn't think about this, but I will show you this by giving it a test. And to do that, I need to throw some blocks in this clock. So I'm just going to throw five stacks in. And uh, let me just help it along because I don't want to wait until all five stacks go through. So put them all over here and then let's run out to the front and we'll see this work. Hopefully, if I haven't messed anything up. Yes, it works perfectly and it's going to knock out my scaffolding. Um, but there we go. And it's also going to knock out that dripstone there that's down and also the one on the floor and everything will get deposited into the hoppers. And my flying machine broke, which is not ideal. Okay, what happened? Uh, the redstone in the back here should be correct. Uh, oh, I didn't increase the time on that repeater. Uh, all right, so I am going to have to rebuild this flying machine that should never happen again um but yeah so all of that stuff will have gotten sucked up into the hoppers and it'll get sent back to the chest which uh is not there where did i put the chest on this machine it's over here uh except the chest isn't actually here it's just a hopper at the moment um, so yeah, we'll need to fix that, but as you can see, it is working, and uh, we've already got some more dripstone out of it. We will, uh, let's get that built back up, and I'm going to tear down that platform over there, and we'll see how much dripstone we can get in, and then we'll farm up a little bit more to uh, try and get this fully dripstoned. All right, so I've torn that down, and I've fixed this flying machine. It is now working. We got ourselves some pointed dripstone from that over there and then this farm over here is also now making it i've put in a little chest and just over time we're gonna get more and more and then i can come in here throw up a bit of scaffolding and throw this stuff in place hopefully i can reach no naturally Uh, yeah, so this is just what I need to do for a little while, and it'll go faster and faster, obviously, as we work here, uh, just because of the nature of the farm. The more dripstone we have in place, the more dripstone we will make, and it knocked out my scaffolding. Oh, and it's going to take my scaffolding away, too. There you go. That's how the farm is actually supposed to work. It's supposed to sweep the blocks up after as well, so... There was a, a good little demonstration uh, of how the farm works, and the flying machine is now working correctly because my timings are now correct. Uh, yeah, this is a different farm, actually, than, um, than was in my little farming video series, but uh, I wanted to capitalize on the fact that you can get the dripstone from above and below, so... Uh, of course, the only real block that uh, is useful for below um, for the slime and honey that doesn't stick to is the terracotta, and then it's uh, just picking it up with hoppers, and flying machines are usually a pretty efficient way to go. So there you go. We, you can see how quickly this dripstone is now going, and every time that it goes across, we are going to get more and more, and everything ends up in this chest over here, as long as all of my hoppers are pointed in the correct direction, which I think think they are I haven't actually tested yet but yes everything everything leads back to there so um we're doing quite well here and basically it's just going to be 
filling this up more and more until we can do a proper hour test. So I will be back once I have fitted this farm entirely with dripstone. And there we go. I have added the pointed dripstone all the way throughout the farm. The farm is now fully up and running and working very, very nicely. It just ran across, but as you can see, things are already growing. So every time this comes across, we are going to be getting blocks over here. Now, while I was getting the dripstone, I was also uh, gathering other resources that I need for building the design of the outside of this building. And I'm not actually sure if I ended up getting enough. Uh, and that resource is, oops, uh, that resource is amethyst. And so let's head down here. And what I need is glass. Glass is uh, over here. Let's grab ourselves some regular glass. And yes, yeah, so we've got the amethyst shards here. And I'm just trying to see how much tinted glass that can make. I don't think, no, it's not going to be enough. I need like four stacks of four and a half stacks of tinted glass for this design so that's not going to do it and i don't think i have any more here i think i already used it all for tinted glass because i like this block so much we need an amethyst farm right now oh that's black stained glass i suppose i could put black stained glass in as a placeholder for the tinted glass but it's just not the same um hmm what to do what to do uh well let's go over to the farm and let's quickly take a look and see what's actually in here at the moment how are we doing uh oh yeah see it's making just tons of dripstone now it's a very very efficient farm um, so I think what the plan has to be is to go out and get some more amethyst. Uh, while I was over in the new chunks, I found a double amethyst geode, like two very, very close together, close enough that their random ticks will sync up. And I think we might have to build up a quick farm this episode and uh, maybe save the decorating for the next episode. So let's... Let's get everything that we would need for an amethyst farm, and which I have no idea what that is. Uh, I designed an amethyst farm, and then I wasn't super happy with it. Might use it, might use something else, but let's get anything that we might need and head over to the 1.17 chunks. And here we are. You may recognize this from our 1.17 exploration episode as two amethyst geodes that were very very close together in a mine shaft that we were in and that is exactly what it is uh, they're close enough that we can afk and both of them will produce amethyst and they're also in a good place uh, near our portal so this is what we are going to use and um I've brought along everything that I need, and immediately you'll be thinking, but wait, there's no redstone in your inventory, and that is because this is not going to be a redstone farm. It is going to be AFK and manual, essentially, because we want to take advantage of the fortune. They've made it very... Ooh, I hope that was a but. It wasn't. Okay, uh, good. Uh, they've made it very, very difficult uh, in 1.17 to farm Amethyst uh, because... You really want the fortune uh, because uh, when you mine it with a oh that silk touch, when you mine it with um, with redstone, you don't get nearly as much for it as when you mine it with fortune. You can get up to sixteen or something. So that is the big difference. Uh, so what we're actually going to do is we're going to mine out everything that isn't a uh, budding amethyst block. And we're also going to mine out all of this calcite as well. And that gives us the added benefit of getting a bunch more calcite, which is a block I really like. And uh, yeah, and then I'll kind of show you what else I'm going to do. Uh, but uh, the ice and things might give that away. But first, we have to mine out quite a few blocks. And there we go. We have this place dug out all manually. And as you can see, we are now getting the clusters, which we can break with fortune to get lots of these and since they're now exposed on all sides we get 
a lot more of them popping up. But now what we want to do is make it a little bit easier to get around the room and get these. So what I am now actually going to do is uh, flood uh, both of these geodes uh, with water. And with doing that, I'm going to be able to swim around the, uh, the geode. I'm going to have to break some amethyst to do this. But I'm going to be able to swim around the geode and, hmm, and get all of the, uh, the blocks, uh, essentially. Um, and amethyst can still grow underwater. And I've also brought some prismarine and a conduit, which I am going to set up out here. And oh, I actually stuck, <laughs> uh, which I'm going to set up out here. Okay, we need a better staircase, uh, which I'm going to set up right here. So hopefully it is going to reach both sides if we make a full conduit, which is actually one bigger than that, just like that. And we'll put the conduit in the very middle. And then we should be able to breathe underwater, see underwater, and also no mobs should be spawning down here, which is nice. So we will get this set up and we will flood this entire chamber. And then I will be back. And we're back and we have conduit power and we're pretty much entirely filled in with water. I'm now out of ice, so I'm just filling in anything that didn't quite fill in with water before with a bucket and water sources, but we're looking pretty good. It's just as they grow a little bit, sometimes they don't have water filled in on all sides, but we're pretty good. And now we are ready to start collecting amethyst, which is going to be now super simple because we can float around and get it. And if we're standing on a block, we do actually mine faster, but we just have to make sure never to break the the budding amethysts themselves and then we can just do this and get a ton of amethyst and i mean i didn't have any in my inventory when we just started this little bit and there we go i've got like four stacks so this is very very fast and this way we should be able to get lots of tinted glass very quickly much faster than just the exploration method and much faster than AF King with redstone would be, and hopefully it'll be enough for us. Oops, I just broke one that wasn't totally done, but this should be, oh no. You see, that's what we have to avoid is breaking those. I almost feel like maybe not having full efficiency on the pick would be even better, but uh, every time we do that, it's gonna slow our efficiency. So we just gotta be careful and I mean, a couple of harvests like this, and we're going to have tinted glass for a while. So this is good, and this is only the first of the two. So we're doing really, really well. Still got a couple over here that wasn't done yet. Sometimes it's difficult to tell the, between, like, the last two phases. Uh, at, at some point, I might build, like, an AFK one of these, uh, just because we'll be able to get big quantities without having to manually do it but uh, for now this is a really good way to get it quickly and efficiently so let's just see of course a bunch of it is going to float up because this is, a lot of this is water sources anywhere where i used ice and not the bucket is water sources so that's quite a bit we still have a couple down here breaking more blocks but there we go and we have oh my goodness <laughs> three six nine twelve almost 15 stacks from one geode and now we have a whole other geode so uh yeah i'm gonna gather these up i'm gonna throw them in a shulker box i'll have to make a new shulker box uh, but i've got shulker shells in my valuables box there and uh we'll oh goodness no uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to need a pickaxe without efficiency 5 just to just to make sure that that doesn't keep happening uh, because we spent a lot of work over here and now I've already destroyed two on the first pass. Um, but yeah, I'm going to gather up what I can, throw it in a shulker box uh, just from one harvest, and then we'll make our way back over to the mushroom biome where we will probably end this week's episode. And we are back over here at the farm, and we even see it working right as I hit record. 
here is the amethyst that we were able to get and this is uh, what i mined out of there as well the blocks of amethyst and calcite bit of smooth basalt uh, so these blocks will come in handy as well but this is what we were really looking for lots and lots of amethyst shards and let's see how much tinted glass we can get out of this this is really all we're going to be using this for that was a lot right there how much can we can we get like five six stacks even look at that yes yeah, so one two three four five six seven eight nine stacks of tinted glass and we have a little bit left over which i'll leave just in case i want to do something else with it as well and we've got all of these blocks plus these stacks that we made before so we now have enough tinted glass to start using it in buildings like the one that is going to go around our dripstone farm here and uh that is unfortunately all the time that i have for today building up this farm building up that farm all of the afking everything putting in all this pointed dripstone has taken a lot of time but i just want to thank you so much for watching if you're not subscribed to the channel make sure you do that in the next episode we're going to be putting a beautiful industrial looking building around the dripstone farm over here but thank you so much for watching.